and the way ye know. Thomas said it unto him, Lord, we know not where thou go, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you have known me, you have known my Father also. And from his forth ye know him and have seen him. May we pray. Our Father, our Father. Father, once again, we are honored that you have allowed us to come together and to glorify your name. Father, thank you. Thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But Father, not only do we want to bless you for your blessings, we want to thank, bless you for being who you are, for being the God that we need, for being the God that is our deliverer, our savior, our light. Father, thank you for all you have did for us. Father, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. You have been with us from when we didn't even know you, Father. When I had, I thought it was just me, Father. I found out that it was you. But I had to stop and stand still and submit myself to your will. And you taught me the way to go. And, uh, and Father, that when that day comes, that we can no longer, we can no longer endure the, the illnesses of this world, we pray that you will receive us unto yourself, that you will be there when we cross over and say, welcome home, my servant. We pray this prayer in your daughter and son, Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen, and amen. Once again, where you have blessed me one more time to be in the presence of your people. Father, I want to thank you. Because if it had not been for you, I wouldn't be here. Father, I want to thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, who suffered, bled, and died a sinner like me. Father, thank you. You have done so much for us. You have been so good to us. Father, we want to thank you. Father, I want to ask you right now to deliver us, to deliver me, Lord. I don't have to say what I need delivered to us because you know. I don't know what others need to be delivered from because you know. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to deliver because only you can. Father, bless us. Lord, our world again is in turmoil. Father, we can't walk down the street. We can't ride in a car. We can't do anything. But only you can fix this. And I know you will. Because you heard the cries of your people before. And you delivered. And you will deliver this. Father, bless the sin. Lord, is so many among us. And people that we don't know are sick. Father, touch them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Give them what they need, Lord. Let them know that you are a healer. Oh, Lord. Father, bless the bereaved. Let them know that you are there for them. Let them they can look to the hills from which cometh your help. 
request your help come. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. It's been rough, Jesus. But you know, you brought me here tonight. This is the first time in a long time that I was able to be where I can stand. I got movement. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. Father God, I want to thank you for my pastor for asking me because I feel good tonight, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for his wife and his children because they're showing us what it is to be a Christian, to serve the Lord. In Mount Hebron, I want to thank you because you have been there. I might not get calls every day, but Lord, I know that you're there. If I call you, you'll answer me. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I pray this prayer, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the sweet name of Jesus, the holy name of Doors yeah. that I cannot see. Jesus, we Jesus, we
soul say yeah. My soul say yeah. Soul say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus is a wonder to my soul. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus is a wonder to my soul. He's a wonder to my soul. He's a wonder to my soul. He's a wonder to my soul. Bless his name. Oh, he's a wonder to my soul. He's a wonder to my soul. He's a wonder to my soul. Bless, bless his name. And all the people said amen. Come on, let me hear you tonight. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in here tonight. Lord has been so good. We thank God for Brother Hill and for those songsters on tonight, for the Dunham family on tonight for praying for us. And I would like to call out the name of two of my nieces tonight. Sister Shonda Houston and Sister Tanya Houston. I told them that their uncle would call their name. Tonight, let's continue to lift them in prayer as they adjust to life without their father physically. We want to continue to lift them in prayer. To all of you that are here, to these preachers, to the wives of these preachers and to our grounds facilitator, Brother Stillwell, to our sister Christy Campbell, and of course to our video ministry and our audio ministry. It is good to to see you and of course our music ministry. Let's deal with these homonym of scriptures, part four, uh, on tonight. I want to deal where we left off on last week, and that is uh, why you find in the 14th chapter of John, I also find the second book to the church at Corinth. Tease my brother, Brother Hill. I tell him he, he's crazy sometimes. I'd be trying to stay in teaching mood and mode. And Sister Miller, he goes crazy on the machine and it makes my voice elevate. But I also uh, want to let y'all know I have a crazy preacher in the person of Reverend Walter Tibbs. You, you'd be trying to keep that monologue voice. And a holler from way in the back, oh yeah, and try to get that voice elevated. So I'm going to try to stay in teaching mode tonight. Uh, if I do, y'all say amen. If I don't say that's because he's a preacher. So anyway, it sliced, it'll come up peanutty. Uh, the fifth chapter of Second Corinthians and the 14th chapter of John, uh, somebody is going to think that I paid Brother Dunham to read past the sixth verse 
It sure make me look good that everybody been cutting it off at the sixth verse. And Brother Dunham uh, uh, got his paycheck coming for me because he read to that seventh verse. Now, let's, let's do this. We're not going to read it. We know what it says. We know that in John 14 and 1, it starts out with, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Then we know that when we double down and go forward to 2 Corinthians, we get to that fifth chapter. And when we talk about that one, there's so many that love to utilize that. For we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, I like that right there. We have a building of God, uh, not made with man's hands, but it's eternal into heavens. And when we look at these two different passages of scriptures, remember they are scriptures of homonyms. Homonyms mean that it can have the same spelling, but it has a different definition, a different meaning, or it can have the same pronunciation, uh, but have no correlation with one another. In other words, homonyms run perpendicular and not parallel. Synonyms run parallel where they mean about the same thing, but this runs perpendicular because it is not the same thing. And remember that, that, that we cut off at verse 6 when Jesus is still talking in verse 7. We're not going to go all the way back to let you know that it actually starts in chapter 13. But we at least want to make sure that since we are in 14 and we go and talk about what Thomas says, when Thomas asks the question, at least we can go through the end of the answer, which is actually verse 7. Uh, if Brother Dunham had gone to verse 8, then I would have rebuked his money because Philip chimes in. And we have to let you know that there is some talking going on, and we're going to come back to that in a few seconds because we want to let you know that even the next two chapters in this uh, verse, in this, in this book of John, can deal with the conversation. So we have to realize that what we're saying in John it's not the same thing. Remember that house, that word house in the Greek that's in the book of John and also the word house that's in the book of 2 Corinthians. It may not have thought, you may not have thought it, but it's actually the same meaning. It has the same Strong's number. It means the same things, but it's the stuff that's surrounding it that takes the tone of a different meaning. So when we go to that 2 Corinthians, remember, we love to cut it off at verse number 7. We love to say we walk by, come on, help me, faith and not by sight. And we love to take our seat when really verse 7 is the balance beam between verses 6 and 8. It's the verse that's in it that holds it up on both sides to, to make the beam balance out as Paul begins to talk to this church at Corinth. Let me go ahead and tell you tonight that, 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 that when you look at these two passages of scriptures, they surely work good separate. But you make them look like a sloppy joe when you try to work them together. I did tell you last week how we do it. We say something like this when we start reading these two passages of scriptures. We say, as in, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building, a house not made with hands eternal into heaven. And because he go to prepare a place, it sure sounds good, doesn't it? But how I have butchered God's holistic writ. And I did not call Paul. I did not called John. I have a direct line to God, but he did not give me permission to alter the word of God. And, and, and since he did not give me permission, I do not have the right to change this meaning. 
So, 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 so watch this. When we cut it off, and I'm going to go ahead and deal with that one first. When we cut off at verse number 7, you have to understand that Paul is still doing some talking. Paul informs us that if I'm here in the body, I'm confident. But if I'm absent from the body, I'm assured. He says, he says, the reason why I want you to understand this, because as long as I'm here, I'm absent from him. But if you don't see me no more, if you get the word that Pastor Miller has gone on, I may be absent from you, but I'm present with him. So, 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 so check it out. Paul could be confident, and he could be confident even because, and you want to write this down, 2 Corinthians 7 and 16. He wants to take on the persona to let us know that Paul could be confident because he says in that 16th verse, that 7th chapter of 2 Corinthians, I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you in all things. Not just when the sun is shining, but even when the freeze came, I still had confidence. Not just when everything is going well, but when things are going to hell in a handbasket, I still have confidence. Not when everybody's doing fine in the house, but when I have some sick days, I still have confidence. Somebody ought to go ahead and wave at me. You ought to put it in your chat, in your feed right there. That no matter whether you're up or whether you're down, you still have confidence that God is still God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Paul, Paul lets us know not only can he be confident and remain confident, but he's also encouraged, and he's encouraged even in his period of mortality. Can I, can I park right there? While we're in these model bodies, while we're in these clay tents, while we're in this house that we begin to decay in, Paul says, I'm encouraged, and the reason why I'm encouraged is because I think not because what I understand is though the outward body begins to perish, there's an inward body being renewed. While I began to, to lose my teeth, while I began to lose my hair, while I began to lose my steps, while I began to lose my breath, is getting shorter, while I began to get sick on a normal basis, while I began to ache in places I've never ached before, while I began not to be able to sleep eight hours anymore, I can only sleep six hours, while my body is decaying, what I realize and recognize is I can be encouraged because even even though this outward temple is decaying away, even though there's a leak in this old building, I want somebody to go ahead and shout with me. There's an inward man, there's an inward woman being renewed day by day. That I won't need glasses. I, I, won't, I won't need contacts. I, I won't need no stick. I won't have to go to the dentist and get the crowns. I know he said wear a crown, but he wasn't talking about it in your mouth. I won't have to worry about that. Because there's an inward body being renewed. I'm, I'm encouraged at the point of mortality. And watch this. I'm going to mess somebody up real quickly. Like The one thing I realized, Brother Dunham, is I am immortal until the Lord gets ready for me. You, you just said mortality. I, I'm in this mortal body. But each of us, we are immortal until the Lord calls our name. What, what do you mean? I, I mean death can't happen until God gives it permission. That, that's why you were almost in a wreck. That's, that's why you flipped over your car and you walked out. That, that's why you, you almost fell in a hole. That, that's why there's somebody else that, you, that was on the plane that you were supposed to be in. They died, but you did because you are immortal until the Lord calls your name. Paul says, I'm trying to get you ready for something. 
And, and, and what, what, what he says to us, what he says, he says to us, he, he says, he says now, 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 now with these verses, uh, it, 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 re, it recapitulates. In, in other words, it summarizes. It, it actually sums up uh, the theme that was discussed in chapter 4. You can't get to chapter 5 without shouting in chapter 4. And what I'm frightened about, Reverend God, I'm frightened that too many people go to chapter 5, verse number 1, where he said, this earth, the house shall dissolve. And we always think that's time for dying. But I dare you to go to verse 16, 17, and 18. Because if you go to 16, 17, and 18 first, you will start shouting when you get to 5 and 1. The reason why I can shout when I get to 5 and 1 is because I realize that while we look at these things which are seen, but there are things that which are not not seen. I recognize that this place that I'm living in is only temporary and I have an eternal place on the other side and somebody ought to go ahead and shout eternal right there. Put it in your chat. Put it in your feet that you have an eternal home and the reason why I get so loud, so carried away because the Lord didn't have to give it to me but I thank God he did. And watch this. He says to be home, which means to be in this earthly house, to be in this transitory, movable, temporary tent. While I'm here in the house, as my body outwardly wastes away, what I realize is that to be in a state of mortality away from the immediate presence from the Lord is not really where I want to end up. In other words, I'm fighting on this side because I'm trying to get somewhere. And I cannot get to my home unless the Lord come back first. Except I go by the cemetery. You, you heard the story. And a man with his friends, and every time he got by the cemetery, he walked through the cemetery. They went on around. And one day they asked, they said, why you always walk through the cemetery? He said, well, you can't see it. But on the other side of the cemetery, that's where my home is. Somebody going to get that on your way home. That, that on the other side of the cemetery, you got to go through the cemetery to get home unless the Lord comes back. And Paul says it's part of this thing called mortality that when mortality kicks out, immortality kicks back in. So watch them. What, what comforted, what, what, what supported, what sustained Paul was the realization that, 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 that this was a temporary state that I'm not here to stay. But he played that song not too long ago. I got a home far away. And I want to let you know, I don't care how you juice it, boost it, or deuce it. Sooner or later, you're going to get out of here. It don't matter how much yeah, you need to exercise and I'm going to keep on exercising. But guess what I know? Even while I exercise, I know one day it's going to be over. And Paul says we take too much control on this body over here trying to keep it here when we don't prepare our hearts to be on the other side. He, he, he lets us know. He, he lets us know. Paul, Paul says, and, and what I want you to realize is to live this way. Is to live by faith. I spent 15 minutes right there and hadn't even got to faith yet. All of this, what I'm saying, to know that the outward body perishes, that the inward body renews, to know that what you see is not what you get, that you know that what you see now is only temporary, but where we're going is going to be eternal, for you know about this earthly house. All of that is how you live by faith and not by sight. Because some of us are good Emmy and Grammy Christians. And that's why when I ask you how you doing, you talking about praise the Lord. I don't know. I don't need I ask you how you doing. Sometimes as a Christian, I don't feel good. 
Sometimes as a Christian, I don't even look good. And sometimes as a Christian, I'm going through hell just like somebody else. But I come by to tell you, I still, I come by to tell you, I still walk by faith. And not by my sight. At death or near death, we get all discombobulated about what we see. And we tend to place faith on the back burner. You, you look at somebody 80 some years old, about you losing weight. Well, what do you expect? They're living in the overtime of life. Because God only gave us 70. And everybody in here, but maybe five, is living in the fourth quarter. If you're over 35, you've been the third quarter. But if you get between 35 and 50, you're in the fourth quarter. And you mean to tell me you don't think nothing going to happen? This is what I say. If you're over 80, you can do what you want to do. Watch this. Watch this. He, he, says, he says, I believe we forget that what we see is not what we're going to end up. Watch this. I need you to write this. I need you to write this. Check it out. It is to live in light of ultimate rather than immediate realities. Can, can I say that again? It is to live in light of ultimate rather than immediate realities. It is to be obedient to God's command despite hardships and and, and obedience and what they produce is still have to be God's command. Because the apostle found a reason to be confident and courageous because of these truths. And his faith rests on facts. Can I tell you why I can walk with my head up? Because I believe in this Bible. And because I believe in this Bible, because I, I've been sick before, I've been near death before, but I come out and tell you, I kept walking in the faith of the facts that God will take care of me. I never gave up the faith. I always remember that we walk by faith. And even when you walk and you see me come in and I'm all slumped over and you say he looked near dead, I might be near dead, but I thank God I'm not gone. And I'm walking on the faith facts of life. And because I walk by faith, I may look bad tomorrow. I may look bad Saturday. But thank God I might look better on Sunday. Just because I walk by the faith that I believe. And that's why Paul said he could face the hardships. And even the threat of death. Without flinching. Because he knew that as long as he remained in the physical body. He was absent from the law. Somebody ought to go ahead and write that in your chat, in your IM, in your DM, that as long as you're living, you're absent from the law. And the reason why I want you to write that, because I want you to understand that, that the sight may not say such things, but faith does. Sight may not say it, but faith does. And Paul ordered his life by the reality what he believed in. The fact that we walk by faith and not by sight is abundant proof that we are absent from the Lord. And we have never gazed upon the Lord with our physical eyes. Only through faith have we ever seen him. And watch this. As long as I'm here, I can't see him. But when I get over there, I'm going to see him. And, and when I see him, since he let me in, then I know I did it the right way. That I had to come by his son Jesus. 
So when I look at this reality, Paul even set it up and seized the opportunity to talk about departing this pilgrimage in the book to Philippi when he says, for me to live is Christ. But for me to die is gain. In other words, Paul was saying, it doesn't matter either way. Either I'm with Christ or I'm a gainer. And really, it's a win-win situation. Somebody, you missed your shout right there. You, you might as well go ahead and put it in your chat right now. You might as well go ahead after you put it in your chat. Let me see you clap them hands. Let me see you hold something up. Because what I want you to know, you're in a win-win situation. Every day that I wake up, is Christ. But if I die, it's going to be gain. I come by to tell you, I'm a gainer, whether I'm on this side or whether I'm on the other side. And Paul tells the Corinthian church, the reason why I'm a winner is because I walk by faith. Not by sight. But watch this. Watch this. And I'm through with I'm through with Corinthians. I'm gonna move over. Paul is wrapping his immaterial heart and his mind around the present and the future life. You didn't hear me. I say Paul is wrapping his immaterial heart, not that thing that they pull out, but the one that controls your thoughts and your actions. And Paul is wrapping his immaterial heart and his mind on not what I've done in the past, but on the present. And the future life. Now that's Corinthians. That's chapter 5. It, it, it tells me in short. That if I live this way. Then I live by faith. And brother Hill. I, 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 I get jacked up sometimes. When folk. That's been walking with the Lord. That's been tearing the usher's clothes off. That's been hopping over pews. That's been running around the sanctuary. That have a Bible larger than a ghetto blaster. And when somebody dies, you go all to pieces. Like the Lord done done you wrong. But you just got through saying that you walk by faith. You know, I realize now, I realize, Reverend Garden, that, 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 that when, when that picture came with my mom walking down and my brother behind, when, when God gave me that picture that she was going to be next, I didn't know what it was for. But my mom had to go for me to witness personally how it feels when you have someone close to you to leave you right in the midst of your closeness in order for me to handle other folk when that loved one died. How in the hell? Uh oh. How in the world? Can I tell you how to act? When I go all the people, let me go ahead and tell you, I don't have to wonder where my mama is. I know where she is. Can I go ahead and tell you? I'm going to see her one day. You know why I know I'm going to see her? Because I'm still walking by faith. And I need somebody in here tonight that you don't mind putting it in your chat and your eye and your deal right now. That you're going to walk by faith no matter what happens. You're not going to go all to pieces. You're going to walk by faith. Paul. Trying to get us to realize that this walk is not an easy walk. We have to stop being good at comforting others. And we can't handle it ourselves. I wonder why you are as hard as a rock when somebody dies in my family. But you're a marshmallow when they die in your family. The only one should be crying. It's those of you that know your loved one on their way to hell. 
Because I don't care what you say up here, that ain't going to put them in the heaven. The song said, let the life that I live speak for me. That's, that's Paul. That's Paul. That's Paul. That's Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul gives us a, 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 a gift wrap present of what's happening right now. As I no longer can dunk a basketball, I can only finger roll. And I'm, I'm like Satchel Page, Reverend Holly. They asked Satchel Page a couple of years ago. They say, oh, Satch, uh, can you still throw that ball like you used to? Satch was in the broadcasting booth in his 80s. Satch said, yeah, I sure can. He said, I could throw it just like I used to. It just take a little longer for it to get there. And that's all I'm trying to tell somebody, the reason why your steps are getting shorter, the reason why your breath is getting shorter, the reason why you're going through more, anybody have more appointments than they did, dance classes now, anybody know that you're going through something right now, I come out to tell you, it's because we're not what we used to be on the outside. But I thank God I got a brand new body on the inside. But then here comes John. And John talks to us in this 14th chapter. And John was really upset with us. Because John says, how dare you try to use me as a faith walk when what I'm trying to do is talk to folk that's been at Bible study, been in Sunday school, been coming here to preach a preach, Come and hear the choir sing. Come hear the deacons and the wives pray. Been with me all this time. And still don't get it. John says, they've been with me almost three years. And it's time for me to get ready to go. And they are talking about the wrong thing. Can, can I go ahead and pause right there, put this in the gumbo and stir it up and let it simmer and tell you, and y'all might as well put it in your chat and your feeds tonight. There's some folk in church that try to get brownie points with the pastor. You, you know, them brothers was trying to get some brownie points. Talking about who the greatest. Then they had their mama and them coming in, talking about one on the left hand, one on the right. Jesus says, I got to leave you. But what we like to cut it off is the way, the truth, and the life. But, 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 but Thomas statement, we do not know where you're going and his question. So how can we know the way reflected on the perplexity of the 11? It, it demonstrated that you can have folk in church 40 years and still don't know scripture. I, I got some folk that I want to study more because I'm ready to dispatch them to do some things. And, and I can't beat scripture in you. I can't make you study scripture. But because of the God that we serve, everybody ought to want to study scripture. The perplexity here with the 11 is, is because they listened to Jesus, but they wasn't hearing it. And then let's change it around the, the community property. They were listening. They didn't hear him, but they heard him and were listening. And he says to them, I got to leave you. And they went all to pieces. I, can I go back to my mama? About two years before she started making her landing. But about two years before the runway got cleared for the heavenly Uber driver to take her, she said to me, I won't be here long. She was doing okay. Had bounced back from stroke number one, doing everything that proud that she shouldn't have been doing. But she said, I'm going to leave you. And you know, we talked about it. And I said, girl, you're not going nowhere. She said, 
I won't be here long. I waited a few days. And I went to the house. And I said, you said something to me. And I need you to tell me in my face. I said, you told me you wasn't going to be here long. She said, I'm not going to be here long. Now watch this. Instead of going to pieces, I went on my knees and prayed. And God took me not to John 14, but he took me to John 13. She was making preparation. And anybody that know the Lord, let me tell you, I don't care who done died in your family, God gave you a warning. You don't want to hear it, you don't want to admit it, but nobody died that God didn't forewarn you. John says, even with this perplexity, and can, can I stop here? Don't, don't, don't jump on Thomas. Because Peter asked a similar question. If you have your Bibles, you can go to John 13, 36. Peter asked a similar question. Okay, you want me to help you? Let me tell you what he said. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither thou goest? And Jesus answered him, whither I go? Thou canst not follow me now. Don't, don't miss your shout. But thou shalt follow me. Somebody ought to go ahead and wave your hands that you know that you'll be able to follow him. After. Put that in your mix. You're going to follow him afterwards. Check him out. Check him out. Check him out. They would remain puzzled until his death. In resurrection and until the advent of the Spirit. They had it, they had all the information. Can, can I can I 2021 this thing? Faith, can I keep it 100? They had plenty of Bibles. They had King James, they had the Geneva. They had the Amplified, NIV, ESV, C V, NIV. They had commentaries. They had all the information. But they couldn't put it together. The way to God is through Jesus Christ himself. And this critical verse for Jesus said that no man could reach God Unless they approach God through Jesus himself. Why, why, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Now, 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 now notice Jesus' claim to deity. He says, I am. And with the I amness of I am, Jesus made three phenomenal claims. He's not talking about walking by faith. But rather, he's claiming who he is. If you want to get to God, then you got to realize that I am is in the house. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But can I tell you something about I am? You do remember I am, don't you? I mean, back in the book of Exodus. You, you do know when he talked to Moses, and Moses said, who shall I tell them sent me? He said, tell them I am that I am sent you. And, 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 and the I am that's in, in John chapter 14 is the sixth of the seven I am's in the book of John. He makes a claim. For his deity. And, and when he makes a claim, he says this. He says, no one comes to the Father except by me. What Jesus is stressing is that salvation 
contrary to what many people may think, is not obtainable through many ways. It's only obtained in one way. Jesus is the only access to the Father because he is the only one from the Father. Watch this, watch this. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to go now, but watch this. Watch this. This verse makes it clear that the Lord Jesus himself is the way to heaven. I need somebody to place in your chat, in your feed, that you know that Jesus is the only access to heaven. I mean, I need to see some clapping hands. I need some praising hands. I need somebody even in the house to put your right hand with your left hand. When I tell you, he's the only way. The way to God is not by the Ten Commandments. Because if you only done ten, you still have an F minus. There are at least 613 commandments. It's not through the ten. It's not through the golden rule. Because your rule may be compacted. Upon your own mindset. It's not by ordinances. And it's not about church membership. There's a difference in a healthy church. Than a wealthy church. And church membership. When church membership becomes healthy. We start focusing on God. When a church membership focuses on wealthy, and I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about your souls. Many of us have taken grace for granted. I said something here. Many of us have taken grace for granted. We talk about God's grace. We mention God's grace. But we don't live God's grace. And, and, and John lets us know that, 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 that it is through Christ and Christ alone. I got a cousin that's a little younger than me. That he has good application. He have great views. But they are personal, worldly views. And it sound good. But it's not doctrinally good. And anybody that know who Jesus is and anybody know who God is know that our rules can't equate to his rules. And this is what he says. He says to us today. He says that today that so many say that it does not matter what you believe. As long as you are sincere. Let me tell you something. I used to mess it up and say just as long as you go to church. That ain't, no, no. If it's not a Bible-based church, you ought to stay at home. They say that all religions have some good in them. and That they all lead to heaven at last. But Jesus said, No one, not President Biden, not Oprah Winfrey, not Medea, not the governor's mansion, not city council, not the county commissioners, no one, not Buddha, not Hindu, no one comes to the Father except by But can I get ready to tell you something? Had it not been for Thomas' question, we might not have this precious statement from the Lord. I call it the triple I am of Jesus. 
You, you can write that in your notes. It's portable. The triple I am of Jesus. The way means the road on which one travels to the Father's house. You do want to go to the Father's house. Anybody want to go to the Father's house? You can go ahead and lift up your hands if you want to go to the Father's house. Anybody on Zoom want to go to the Father's house? Anybody on Facebook and Instagram, YouTube want to go to the Father's house? If you want to go to the Father's house, you ought to show me some hands. The way means the road down which one travels to the Father's house. Jesus is like a bridge road that's spanning in between the gulf between earth and heaven. That's why when the old preacher closed, sometimes he tells you that, that he reached down to man and he reached up to God. Because he stands in the gap. And the truth and the life are eternal aspects of Christ's nature. I say it again. The truth and the life Yes, they are. They, they, they are eternal aspects of Christ's nature. Christ stated the temporary aspect of the way before he states the eternal of the truth and the life. He, he states the temporary of where we are now for the eternal of where we're trying to go. Christ, Christ, Thomas, Thomas, and the disciples had hoped to satisfy their curious minds. But Jesus wished to promote their safe arrival. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I rewind the tape? Thomas and the disciples had hoped to satisfy their curious minds. But that is not what Jesus had in store. He wished to promote their safe arrival in the heavens. Which means if you don't come to him, your arrival will crash before you get there. The truth guaranteed light for a safe journey. And the life will provide the necessary energy to assure reaching the final definition. In other words, how you live in the pre-concert of life will determine where the telos is going to be. You want me to come back from doctor's terms and tell you what I'm talking about? How we live every day will determine if we end up in heaven or hell. And I need everybody to go ahead and hit something and let me know where you're trying to end up. Because everybody that talk about heaven not wanting to do the right thing to get there. So here we go. That the exclusiveness of Jesus is the only approach to the Father. I'm gone. I said I was going to be through by 745, so I want to go. But I have to get you here. And this is my final thing. The destination is not Jesus. The destination is God. I, I say the, the destination is not Jesus. Jesus is my ride to get there. I count flight in Jesus' arms. But my destination is God. And, and, and watch, watch what Jesus did. Watch what he did. Watch what Jesus did. Jesus said, Clearly, where he was going. He was going to the Father. I'm going to mess you up in a few minutes. In other words, he was not going to remain dead. I have to go. They're going to try to kill me. 
But I'm not going to let them get the satisfaction of killing me. I'm going to die. But I'm not going to remain dead. He says, I'm going to arise and I'm going to sin. And I'm not going to sin like a kite that you can pull me back on the string. But I'm a sin to the Father. Can I tell you, this is a picture of both the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. And notice what he says. He says, I'm going to my father's house. His destination was not so much the house. You're going to miss this. this is, whew, let, me, let, me, let me come back to it. Let me come back. His destination is not so much the house. As glorious as the house is, it's the Father. And I believe too many times when we arrive at church, when we're at church, we become so in awe of the glorious appearance of the house. We become so engaged in the beauty. Nice seats. Quashed and immaculate. Stands up. Lord of Lord. King of King. Jesus Christ. Emmanuel screams out. We get so in, indebted unto the house. And we never receive the vision of the Father. Can I say this? When we get into God's house, instead of smiling and rejoicing at the beauty of the walls, we ought to see God with his arms wide. I'm standing in the center of the cross of Calvary. But on top of the cross, I see God with his arms wide open. Not the beauty of the house, but the beauty of the Father. His arms wide open. Inviting us into his place and into his space. John lets us know that the house, watch this, without the father would not even be a home. You missed that. If heaven didn't have the Father, heaven wouldn't be heaven. Well, I say this to us. This says something about the vital importance to the believer. That the believer's primary objective is to go to the Father himself. Not to heaven. Not to a place, but the believer's aim is to live in the Father's presence. I'm out. I'm out. But in 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 16, through chapter 5, verse 10, Paul is giving an eternal perspective. But in John chapters 13 through 17, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure, his leaving, his dying, and his transitioning. 
the same house, but the context is different. The same house, but the content is different. Just because the house have the same strong number, we have to know it's a different setting, if a different reason, it's a different piece. But since they mentioned it, since John mentions, since Paul talks about it, then I must say something. That living, he loved me. Dying, he, he saved me. Bear it, he carried my sins away. But when he arose, he rose with all power. In heaven and in earth. Because he lives. Somebody ought to help me right there. I can face tomorrow. I, I said because he lives. I don't know about you. But I can walk a little straighter. I, I said because he, he lives. I can raise my hand and shout hallelujah. But because I know where I know where, where he went, but I get joy knowing that he's coming back. Do you want to see him? Is there anybody want to see him when he come back? Is there anybody want to be with him when he come back? And can I go ahead and tell you, when he comes back, he don't have to call me by name. If he just let me ride. He don't have to catch me on the morning's bench. He don't have to catch me in the amen corner. He don't have to catch me in the pulpit. He don't have to catch me in the pew. He can catch me riding down the highway. Whatever he's doing, just don't pass me by. But the words say the same Jesus. That count a cloud and wave bye-bye. One of these old days. Anybody believe that? If you believe that, you ought to put it in your chat that I believe that he died. I believe that he rose. But I sure don't believe that he's coming back. I don't shout because he died. I don't shout because he lives. I shout because he's coming back. Somebody ought to go ahead and shout hallelujah right there. Somebody ought to go ahead and shout glory right there. And you're shouting glory because you know that he's coming back. And I want to be ready when he comes. Anybody want to be ready when he comes back? May God bless you. May God keep you. This is our prayer. Glory, glory, come on, help me. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my Burn down. Come on, let's do that again. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down. Glory, glory. 
Halleluja Sees alleen my Burden down Anybody feel better? I feel better So much better Since I laid my burdens down I feel better So much better Since I laid my burdens down I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my burden down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my burden down. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. Since I laid my burdens down. Burden down, Lord. Burden down, Lord. Since I laid my burden down. This is our invitation now. We want to give you the opportunity to come aboard the Mount Hebron family. If you do not have a church home, we would be loved. We'd love to have you. At this time now, if you're on our Zoom feed and, and you would like to join, all you have to do is put it in your chat that I want to join tonight. And I want to be a part of the Mount Hebron family. If you are on our Facebook, all you have to do is put it in your message. Put it in your I am. Tonight, Pastor, I want to join because I don't want to die without Jesus. And I don't want to die a vagabond because if you don't have a church home, you're homeless. And if you didn't want to join alive, why try to have somebody drag you in here dead? If you're on our Instagram, I'm telling you, we would love to have you. Just put it in your DM. I want to be a part of the family. I want to join tonight. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, there's a number for you. There's a number for those that don't know how to use the message box. That number is 713-733-9170. This is our invitation to discipleship. It's ours to extend, yours to accept or reject. May the Lord add a blessing. I like that. That's an old one, but good at that. Look up on his face. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you in cover. I was to extend you as to accept or reject. Amen. On his Savior. On the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Oh, yes, Lord. Cares of pass. Home at last. Heaven to rejoice. 
Would y'all sing a verse of that song? Come on, brother. Here. Oh, I want to see look upon his face. for our giving now. Those that have not hit your gift of fire, your cash app. We ask that you would do so at this time. Those that like to bring yours hard copy. Check our cash. We ask that you would come and place it in the mail slot and push it all the way through. That you will annotate on your envelope or you will annotate on your memo where you want the funds to go. To your women's ministry, to your men ministry, to your tithes, to your offering, to the Family Life Center. As we make preparation in the next couple of months to go back in the Family Life Center, some of those machines may not still be working. So let's not ever forget that we're still giving to the Family Life Center. Our village funds, our apartments, something that may be coming in the future we want to make sure that we're giving to that as well again may the Lord add a blessing to the readers hearers and doers of his word let's pray over this offering Lord how we thank you thank you for those that have given already those that will be giving now and we ask master that you touch the hearts of those that are not giving as they should you would give us the increase over the faithful that are giving. We thank you for allowing us to worship and praise your name. And Master, we don't come to see the building, but we come to see you with your arms wide open. We thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for these finances. In all wise and always name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. We thank God for you tonight. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Somebody should have been helped tonight. I don't know if you were helped, but I helped myself. I was helped tonight by the word of God. I was helped and saw some things God gave me while I was standing that I did not have written on paper, did not have written in the iPad, did not have on the cell phone, but God put it in my heart. So we want to make sure uh, that if you were helped tonight, that you put it in your chat tonight, you put it in your IM, your DM, that you were helped tonight. And I don't even mind if you put how you were helped, but just let me know that the word of God helped you on tonight. Again, to all of those that are in the house tonight, uh, we thank God for you. Uh, thank God for your witness. Thank God for your praise. Uh, we probably will have two more weeks of this teaching, preaching uh, moments. I want to go ahead and tell the ministers tonight uh, that you are invited. You have a whole week to get back here with your wives or by yourself. Uh, we, we'll be looking for you on next Wednesday night to the Mount Hebron crew, the two live crew. I want to go ahead and wave at you tonight and tell you how much I appreciate you, how much I thank you. To our Facebook fam, our location on Facebook, may God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you. I thank you for chiming in. I thank you for allowing us to interrupt your regular scheduled program called life 
and tuning in with us. To our Instagram family, I want to thank you for tuning in with us. And we realize that you don't have to. But we're sure glad that you did. To our YouTube family, we thank God for you for tuning in with us tonight. Again, may the Lord add a blessing to not only the hearers, but the doers of his word. May God continue to bless you. But here, come on, let's close out. Just in case. Oh, yeah. The Lord shall come before we get together. Together again, together again. I'll meet you, I'll meet you. Meet you on the other side. Oh Lord, and, and now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, I would say to you, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and ever, and all of the saints of the church said, Amen.